Alright YouTube, what's going on? So today I'm going to be talking about classifying PDEs as hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic. Um, the, first the first thing you're going to need to help identify this stuff is going to be this equation right here. This is your number one equation. Uh, we're going to refer back to this when solving these problems. Um, really what you're looking for is you're looking for the coefficients of your um, derivatives. So this will help you identify uh, what the shape of your graph is looking like. So if you remember from the quadratic equation, um, b squared minus 4ac, um, we use this part of it of the, we use this part of the quadratic equation to identify um, what the shape of our graph is looking like. Um, so, um, if you if you gather your appropriate terms and your b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, um, this implies that your model um, should resemble something hyperbolic, like if your b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. This implies that your partial differential equation is elliptic-like. And if your b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, this implies that your graph is parabolic in nature. So I drew two-dimensional graphs here. Um, in a normal case, you would actually find a 3D uh, model of your curve. However, uh, those are kind of hard to draw. So what I did, what I basically just cut off the z-axis. And if you were to look at this at plain view and and cut it off the the z-axis, uh, somewhere close to the origin, some of your equations should resemble these type of uh, curves. So. Let's take a look at our first example. Our first example is ut plus utx minus uxx plus u of x squared equals sine of u. Now, if we remember from equation one, we take a utt plus b utx plus c ux of x, right? And let's compare and contrast. Um, we're not going to be looking at the right-hand side. We're only looking at the left-hand side and the higher derivative. So we're not looking at u of x squared, and we're not looking at u of t. So if we compare and contrast, the mixed derivative, uh, b, is going to be equal to 1. Its coefficient is 1 right here, 1 times that. Um, and our derivative with respect to x twice is going to have a coefficient of negative 1. So c is equal to negative 1. Um, doesn't look like there's a second derivative of t here, so we're just going to say a is equal to 0. So if we follow the equation b squared minus 4ac, this gives us 1 squared minus 4 times 0 times negative 1. This part goes to 0, which is equal to 1 squared. It's equal to 1, greater than 0. Thus, since our b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, we can label this as hyperbolic. That was pretty simple. You just kind of plug and chug, right? Let's gather it again. So I'm not going to write down the equation that we use. Um, so we're going to notice that the right-hand side has no derivatives. It's kind of useless. Um, our lower order derivatives don't really matter. So now we're left with u of x of x and u of t of t. Now, in this example, there's no mixed, so our a is going to be equal to 1, our b is going to be equal to 0, and our c is going to be equal to 1 again. Thus, we have 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 is equal to negative 4, which is less than 0, which implies that our equation is elliptic. So we have 
an elliptic equation. Let's look at the next one. Alright, so the right hand side has no high order derivatives. Cross that out. Cross out the lower ones. Um, now we have here, we have no mixed one, so b is equal to 0. Uh, we have a is equal to, let's say, 1. And c is equal to negative 1. This implies that uh, we get 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1, which is equal to positive 4, which is greater than 0, which implies hyperbolic. These are pretty straightforward when you're dealing with constants. Um, so let's go to the next one. In this example, um, let me write down the equation. We have a times u of t of t plus b of u of t of x. That's our mixed one. Plus c times u of x of x. Here, um, if you compare, a exists, so a is equal to 1. Um, what's unique about this one is that our B doesn't exist. So B is equal to 0 and C uh, is equal to X. So instead of being a constant, this is going to be a unique um, answer. So we have B squared minus 4AC is going to imply that we get 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times x, which is equal to negative 4x. Now, this all depends on your variable x. So your x is going to be, let's give an example and say the x is the domain. All right, like in the graphs I drew earlier, um, this will be your x, this will be your y, or I'm sorry, t. It's actually, normally it's opposite, but anyways. Um, so your x is going to represent uh, the domain that will help you understand, or your co-domain, what, what the graph is doing. So if x is less than 0, this implies that we have 4, which is greater than 0, which is hyperbolic. All right. Because any negative number times that, any negative number is going to be, any two negative numbers is equal to a positive one. Now, if your x is greater than 0, that implies that we get a negative number. Because a negative number times a positive number is a negative number. So we get negative 4, which is less than 0. Thus, that is elliptic. So, as you can see, our domain is hyperbolic for when x is less than 0, and our domain is elliptic, or our graph is elliptic when our domain is x is greater than 0. Alright, now let's check our next one. This one's going to be a little bit tricky because instead of having a function x or a dependent variable x, we're actually dealing with u itself. So let's right hand side, no derivatives. Left hand side, there it is, we got it. So we got a times u of t of t plus b u of t of x plus c u of x of x. All right, now our b here is equal to negative one, right? And our a is equal to u squared. And our c is equal to just u. So we have 1 squared minus 4 times u squared times u, which is equal to 1 minus 4 u cubed. Now, this is the interesting part is that if it's greater than 0, right, that means that u cubed is
less than one fourth, which implies hyperbolic. All right. If u cubed is equal to one fourth, this implies parabolic. But because that would be one four times one fourth, which is one, one minus one equals zero, that's parabolic. Now, normal case, you don't really see this this type around the origin. Um, so we have u three is is greater than one fourth. That would imply that this is less than zero. So that would become elliptic. So our graph is depending on functions of u. Um, you could take the cube root if you want to, but um, I think you get the, the point. So yeah, so that's how you qualify. In reality, before I leave this one, you don't really see, like I said. But uh, these two are the major ones. Um, so thank you all for, because it equals zero. Thank you all for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe.